So let me just start again real quick. Today we're comparing and contrasting the co-functions. Uh, f of x equals sine x and g of x of equals cosine x. We're going to compare and compare and contrast. I can say words analytically, graphically, and verbally. And those were your definitions. If you were not here today, press pause, get your definitions co copied down, and then continue. We're going to graph these functions so that we can compare and contrast them. So let's take a look at the instructions. It says complete the table. So that's going to be our analysis. We're going to analyze these values on a table of values. So we're going to complete the table and then graph f of x is sine of x and our g of x, which is just an alternate function, is cosine of x. And these are the parent functions of your sine curve and your cosine curve. If you would please, off on the left-hand side, make a little note. When you're graphing sine and cosine functions, you graph in smooth curves. Curves. No straight lines, no jagged turns. We graph in smooth curves. And I will tell you that sometimes it's really difficult to do that when your paper's facing up and down. A lot of times when I'm graphing my sine functions and cosine functions, I will turn my paper so that I can get, I can see where my hand is going and my hand isn't in my way. So that's just some advice for you. Okay. So I will do my sine function in red and my cosine function in blue. And what I'd like to do is look at the unit circle. As you remember from that, that um, animation I was just showing you, that those graphs of the two waves were coming from the rotation around the unit circle. So we also need to remember that when we're graphing these, that we need to graph them in radians. Because radians actually represent real numbers. Whereas degrees are just some human contrived way to measure angles, it's pretty difficult to graph them on a coordinate plane. So we usually graph these in, um, in radians. All right. So <clears throat> you'll notice that all of my input values are radians. So I'm going to go to a unit circle. I'm just going to draw a little one right here. You don't have to draw it because you have your own picture. And I'm just going to draw one real quick. And I'm going to start with the coordinates of all of my values in terms of qu the quadrantal angles. So I'm going to start with sine. Now, if you recall, sine is the y coordinate. So at zero radians, my sine is zero. Right, because this is the point one zero. So at zero radians, my sine of zero is zero. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate positively to all the quadrantal angles and get my values. So as I rotate positively up to pi over two, what's my sine value? One. Okay, so that's one. And then I continue to rotate positively until I get to pi radians. And my sine function is cycling back down to zero. That's interesting that that happens. And I will tell you, when we finish this, I want to come back and explain the in-between values to you. Let's just cycle one more time to 3 pi over 2. And what is our sine function's coordinate? Negative 1. All right, so that's negative 1. And then we cycle all the way back to 2 pi and 0. And we start over. So that represents the period where the values change, 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 change. And then you get back, you go one full revolution, and then everything starts over again. Now let's rotate backwards. So we're going to go to the negative rotation. So if we're starting at 0 and we rotate backwards, we're at? Negative 1, keep rotating backwards, 0, keep going, 1, and 0. So it goes like this, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0. I mean, it just goes over and over again. Okay? Now here what I'd like to talk about is what is happening in between these. 
<clears throat> well, the values in between, I'm just going to grab my black pen, 0 and 1, all of these angle measures, radians between 0 uh, um, and pi over 2, have to fit on the number line between 0 and 1. And then, as we head back down, they go between 1 and 0. So like 0 0.5 and 0 0.75, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.0010. 0. And then they head down from 0 to negative 1. So you get values like negative 0 0.5 and negative 0 0.999. And then you'll hit negative 1. And then they start cycling back up to zero. So your values down here have to be between negative one and zero. So you top out at positive one and you bottom out at negative one and all of your other values are in between those. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Let's go back and do your cosine function. So we'll go back to zero radians, but now we're going to look at our x coordinates. So we're going to start at zero radians. Our cosine is one. All right. And then we cycle up to pi over 2, and our cosine is 0. So you see how at 0, cosine was ahead? It's the lead function. Sine is lag. All right. And then we go from 0 to negative 1 at pi. And then we continue to rotate down to 0, and the pattern is emerging again. And then we rotate back up to 1. So see the period there? That's a full rotation of 2 pi. Reverse it. Go the other way. So 1, 2, 0, 2, negative 1, 2, 0, 2, 1. And see, here's what I mean. My cosine's always ahead. Look. 1 to 1, 0 to 0, negative 1 to negative 1, 0 to 0. See that what I'm doing here? I'm analyzing this data. I'm looking at it analytically. And I can see that cosine's always in the lead. And sine is always behind. Interesting, don't you think? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a graph that represents radians or theta. In this case, it's x, okay? But it represents your radians. So your x-axis is your radian values. And what we want to do is we want to break up our, our number line, not in terms of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but maybe in terms of pi over 2 and pi and 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, and we break it up by quadrants, okay? So that's what we're going to do on our x-axis. These are our inputs, or our angle values. We're going to go 0. I'm going to grab my black pen here. So I'm going to skip one because I'd like to leave room because I'd like to graph the 45-degree reference angles here. So that's going to be pi over 2, and then pi, and then 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi. So that's the rotation forward. We'll back it up. And go the opposite direction, negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 2 pi. So you get two full revolutions there. And sometimes I'll ask you for 0 to 4 pi. So you'll have to redraw it. And sometimes I'll just ask from negative 2 pi to pi, 2 pi. Okay. Now remember what I said, it tops out at positive 1 and negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and go up four um, tick marks to positive 1, and I'll make a mark at halfway. Do the same thing down here. I always like to have halfway coordinates. Those are really helpful. And so there we have. This is a pretty common graph for you to use when you're graphing your sine and cosine functions. So that's a really great setup. And I'll teach you tomorrow to set your calculator up to do that same window. So when you look at your graph on the window, it'll be that set of points. Okay. All right. So let's grab up our red pen and let's graph, starting at zero, our sine function. So when we plugged in zero, we got out 
zero. When we plugged in pi over two, we got out one. And when we plugged in pi, we got out zero. When we plugged in three pi over two, we got out negative one. And then we got zero. So you see that pattern there? Zero up to one, down to zero, down to negative one, up to zero, up to one, down to zero, down to negative one, like that. Reverse it. So negative pi over two is negative one. Negative pi is zero. Negative three pi over two. It's the same as pi over two. They're the same angle pretty much. Okay. Now, if we were to just graph those, we could graph them connecting them with straight lines, and that's not proper. So we'd like to get some intermediate values in there before we draw our sine curve. Before we do that, before we do the intermediate values, let's switch to our blue pen and graph our cosine function. And again, we'll start at zero, and we'll graph the cosine of zero radians is one. So you see how it got to one before sine did? Sine had to go all the way to pi over two before it hit one. And then pi over 2 is 0. And then pi is negative 1. 3 pi over 2 is 0. And then 2 pi is 1. Reversing it. So if you just look at the blue, it looks kind of like a W. Right? Don't you think? Looks like a W. It also looks like an even function, like you could like you could definitely fold it on the y-axis and the points on the left would be the same as the points on the right because the cosine function's even. We talked about that yesterday. And the sine function's odd. So pi over 2 is positive 1 and negative pi over 2 is negative 1. That's odd. Okay. All right. Let's go do some intermediate values. We'll do exactly dead center between all these values. We'll do the 45 degrees or the pi over fours. So going back to my red pen, it would probably be a really good thing over here <laughs> off to the side. Now, if we were using our unit circle, pi over four is right here. And here, pi over four is the square root of two over two and the square root of two over two for sine and cosine. They're the same. But do you know where that is? Because I don't know where to put that on the number line. I would like its approximate value. So over here, we could say the square root of 2 over 2 is approximately equal to 0 0.707. You'll graph these enough that you will know that. And of course, you can use your calculator to make that calculation on your own. Okay, so here's what I know. If I'm doing pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. My sine values are positive in the top, right? And then as I come back around, they go negative in the bottom, right? But they're always 0 0.707. And so in quadrant 1, which is pi over 4, you have 0 0.707. <coughs> In quadrant two, sine is still positive. In quadrant three, your sine becomes negative. And then at seven pi over four, which is in quadrant four, your sine is also negative. Now let's go and put in our cosine function. <clears throat> so I'm picking up, I'll go and do my rotation the other way in a second, because I'm going to show you a cool pattern. All right. So what do we know about the sine of cosine, like its actual sine value? Is it positive or negative? Not sine, S-I-N-E, but sine, S-I-G-N. What's the sine value of cosine, positive or negative, in quadrant one? Positive. Okay, so it's positive, 0 0.707. Well, you know what? Analytically, that tells me that my graphs will intersect right there. Same input gives same input. Output means that I have an intersection. In quadrant two, at 3 pi over 4, what's my cosine, positive or negative? So that would be negative 0 0.707. In quadrant three, cosine is positive or negative? Negative. So look at that. There's another intersection. And they intersect, just analytically, let's think about this for a second. They intersect because the sines 
of the two values are the same in quadrant one, sine and cosine are positive, and in quadrant three, sine and cosine are both negative. What about in quadrant four? It's seven pi over four. Cosine is positive. All right. So now I would also like to put the values down here for the negative rotation. So could I say that seven pi over four is the same as negative pi over four? That's this one, right? If I rotate backwards, so this value is coming over here. And then this is quadrant 3. Negative 3 pi over 4 is also quadrant 3, so that's negative. So basically now I'm just reversing this. Instead of going front to back, I'm going back to front. So negative 0 0.707, that's in quadrant 2. Negative 7 pi over 4 is in quadrant 1. That is positive 0 0.707. Same thing goes for your sine functions. 7 pi over 4 is in the same quadrant as negative pi over 4. So that is a negative 0 0.707 for your, your sine. This is quadrant 3. Sine is negative in quadrant 3. So again, they intersect in quadrant 3 because they're both negative. In quadrant 2, sine is positive. And at negative 7 pi over 4, which is in quadrant 1, 0 0.707. Again, intersect. So these will be the places where we will see our graphs intersect. Okay, so let's go and graph those. We'll start at sine. We'll go ahead with our red pen since we have it out right now. And we're going to graph the intermediate values. So pi over 4 would be halfway between 0 and pi over 2. And so we're going to go for your sine function up about 7.07. .07, so maybe like right there, because this would be 0.75, right? And then there it is again at 3 pi over 4. And then at 5 pi over 4, it's down at negative 0.707. .07. And at 7 pi over 4, which is between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, there it is again. Do you see the pattern? Do you see it? Look at my pen. Okay. So as I come over here, I'm going to drop down to <coughs> negative 0 0.707. Hit negative 1. Come back up. Hit negative 0 0.707. Pass through 0. Go up to 0 0.707. And then come back down. <coughs> so you can see that pattern. Okay. Now, like I said, it's pretty hard to graph a nice smooth curve here when your hand's in the way. So you might have to turn your paper sideways, but give it a shot. It's smooth curves. It's even harder when you can't actually see. Like I'm looking at my screen, but my hand's on my pad. Woo! This is not easy. And then definitely just pass through and hit arrows on both ends of those. Nice smooth curves. That's not so smooth for me, but I did the best I could do. Okay, questions about that? Does that look like an odd function to you? Like you could flip it 180 degrees and it would be the same graph? Like it would be symmetrical, it would be right back on top of itself? If I rotated it upside down, yeah, that has odd origin. It's odd symmetry. I mean, it's it's an odd function, so it has origin symmetry. Okay, let's go and do our in-between blues. So at pi over 4, we had positive 0 0.707. And then let's just follow our blue to negative 0 0.707. Hit negative 1. Come back up. Intersect in quadrant 3. Head back up. Hit 0 0.707. You can kind of see what's happening there. Same thing on the other side. Get those graphed. And then this is a W shape. So when you hit negative 2 pi, when you graph it, could you take a stop what you're doing and look? You're going to hit the top of that and then put the... Put the what the behavior is that it's going to head back down 
on both ends of those, it's going to come up and go back down. Okay, so make sure that you do that. Woo! Okay. Now, I could get even more technical, and tomorrow I will. I'm going to have you graph a really precise um, sine function and cosine function with all of the angles on our unit circle. So we'll do the 30 degree, the 45 degree, and the 60 degree. And I will teach you to draw that. It'll be a really helpful tool. It'll be a reference sheet to do homework and other things. So we'll make really beautiful ones tomorrow. But that's a good sketch. When you're doing your homework, though, typically, all I care about is that you hit the maximums, you hit the minimums, and you hit the zeros. That's all I care about. You don't have to do the intermediate values when you're sketching graphs on most of your homework. Okay. <laughs> Okay, <coughs> now let's look at some behaviors. This part of your assignment tomorrow is to be able to read what's written down here at the bottom and give me the, and fill in the blank. So your sign behaviors are on the top and your cosines are down here at the bottom. So I'm going to switch back to my red pen. It says as X approaches zero, negative rotation. What's my sign of X? Look at my graph. If x is 0, what's my sign of x? Whether I'm coming at it from a positive rotation or I'm coming at it from a negative rotation, my sign of x is 0. What about if I'm approaching pi over 4 from a positive rotation? So pi over 4 positive. What's my sign of x? Right here. Nope. It's pi over 4. That's a 45 degree angle. Well, Square root of 2 over 2. Now, it's I don't want the approximated 0 0.707. That's helpful when I'm graphing. But when I'm asking for values, I would prefer the exact value, right? As I approach pi over 4 in a positive rotation, my sine is a square root of 2 over 2. That's its value. All right, let's approach negative pi from a negative rotation. So that means I'm going this direction, negative pi. What's my sign approaching? Zero. And, and you can use the unit circle to figure that out, or you could just go on your, your graph right here. Here's negative pi, right? Your output is zero. That's what it is. All right, switching to your blue pen, let's do your cosine function behaviors. So same inputs same thetas <clears throat> so as x approaches a zero radians negative what's your cosine <laughs> one okay as x approaches pi over four right here from the positive rotation what's cosine square root of two over two you got it as x approaches pi from the negative rotation, what's your cosine? Negative 1. You got it. Okay, so that's just a little review of those behaviors. We haven't talked about them in a while. I wanted to make sure you could read them. All right, now let's sum it up. Let's talk about the features. So we've looked at it analytically. We've looked at it graphically. Now we're going to draw some conclusions about it. And then you're going to verbally, you are, explain what you learned. So the features of f of x equals sine of x. What could you say? Is it continuous or discontinuous? Continuous. No break in the graph. There's no asymptotes, nothing to break up our graph. We didn't jump. We didn't break. None of that. Okay, what's our domain? Right? I can rotate forward forever. I can rotate backwards forever. Okay? But what about my range? Closed or open? Closed, for sure. Right? Because you were inclusive. Right? Actually using, hitting those points. Now, let's talk about our x-intercepts. That's a little more abstract. Our zeros. Where are they? Where were they occurring? At every interval of pi right at zero pi at one pi at two pi right 
So we can say that our x-intercepts are at pi times some number n. As long as we define n as anti any integer. Okay? So pi times 1, pi times 2, pi times negative 1 million. Periodic, right? Definitely over and over again, more and more rotations. <clears throat> so those are our zeros. What about our x-intercept? I'm sorry, y-intercept. Thank you. Where did it intercept the y-axis? At the origin. Yeah. Did it have any vertical asymptotes? No, because it was continuous. You know, it doesn't have an undefined in it. The sine and cosine were never undefined. Remember when we filled out that value? But all the other ones are undefined in certain areas, so they'll have asymptotes. Okay, even or odd? Odd. We talked about that yesterday, so that means its symmetry is about the origin. And it has a period of 2 pi before the pattern starts over. Switching to our cosine functions, let's draw some conclusions. Continuous or discontinuous? Continuous. Our domain is? <coughs> yep, and our range is closed from negative 1 to 1, right? Because they're basically the same graph, right? One just is it leading the other, right? Cosine is leading sine by a whole pi over 2. So their x-intercepts will be reflective of that. So our sine was pi over n. Those were our zeros. Our cosines are happening where? Where are the zeros? At the pi over 2 and the 3 pi over 2, right? And then the 5 pi over 2. So they are ahead, ahead of pi of the sine function by a whole pi over 2. So we can say that the x-intercepts are at pi over 2 plus, because they're ahead, of pi times n. They have to be 90 degrees greater than pi all the time. So this is why it's the lead and this is the lag. Because this one gets to get to a zero at pi over 2 faster than the sine function. Y-intercept was? 0, 1. Again, another reason to see why cosines ahead of sine. Vertical asymptotes, none. <coughs> Even or odd? Even, and that's because it's ahead. Symmetry is? Y-axis. And its period is? How long before it repeats the pattern? 2 pi. Okay. And so that is the end of our lesson. Um, your homework tonight, I'm going to repeat it for those that aren't here today, is to write about this, write about it. So there's two ways to reflect upon it. And then your other homework is to grade last night's homework. I put the key on Canvas. I showed all of my work in case you're confused. Okay, corrections are due by Friday. Thank you.